It's been a minute. <laughs> it's been a minute. Okay. What is what is transhumanism? I'm going back through that definition again. Transhumanism is a philosophical and technological movement, technological movement that aims to augment human capabilities, physically, intellectually, and emotionally through the use of advanced technology. So even if you're not in the, in the coaching industry, you still need to listen. We're talking everything. This is everything from biohacking neural implants to artificial intelligence and genetic engineering, artificial intelligence, biohacking, and genetic, all of it, genetic engineering. What is the goal of transhumanism? What is the goal? I mean, Let's, let's just call it up. The goal is to elevate human existence, extend our lifespans, and potentially unlock capability we haven't even dreamed of. Okay, so basically, <laughs> basically to elevate the human existence. So which is what elevate our existence, take it up a notch, extend our lifespan. So we're going to be living longer. Okay, so Jay, what, what's your point? Like, what's your point? Because right now, I don't even know if I want to live longer. Okay, so let me just tell y'all this. The reason why a lot of y'all don't want to live longer is because you're in a state of need. Because I guarantee you, if you could think faster than you do, if you could learn faster than you can, if you can earn money faster than you are, you would literally be okay with living a little bit longer. If you were in a state where you felt safe and you felt like you could trust, you would be in a better situation. Like you would feel much more hopeful than you are right now. Okay. So that's really kind of like, if you're live watching live comment live, if you're watching the replay, comment replay, and this is really for Facebook because TikTok after I go live, that's it for y'all. But I mean, after I finish my live, so let's just go here. If I am a coach, right? If I am a coach and I am coaching people and right now you see that the experience of the human is not where you think it should be as a, as a person, really, because I serve and, and work with women. So for women, especially, it's going to be very important for us that we have to start thinking about the future as it pertains to our industry. I know that a lot of people are not talking about this. I know it ain't. I know it's not. And that's kind of a, probably a good thing because when y'all start Googling this stuff later, I hope to be one of the people that come up on your SEO as one of the first ones to talk about this. So transhumanism for the life coaching industry. So let's just kind of put in perspective. When we talk about life coaching, right? We're talking about empowerment. We're talking about individuals that want to partner up to become their best self. So most times, most times, the people that we're coaching want to be in a self-actualized state. They want to transcend who, like they want to unlock, if you will, I hate that word unlock because I feel like ChatGPT uses so much, but, <laughs> but we want to really just like soar and know what is on the other side of things. Like, okay, I've reached my potential, now what? What are the possibilities now that I've gotten my potential? Now that I've gotten here, what else is there for me to do? And a lot of people don't like this conversation because it sounds very like, girl, what is you saying? Like, we got people like the war is going on, all this stuff happening. No, right here on our front door, a lot of y'all that's on this TikTok or that's here, you all right. 
you are all right. And you need to hear that things are happening that you need to be aware of so that you can learn to pivot if necessary. Okay. So if we're talking about coaching people that want to be better, which means that they're already performing at some level, but they want to be better than they are because that's what coaches do. Coaches are not therapists. Coaches are not professional huggers. Coaches are not like, we're not trying to coddle you and make you feel encouraged. No, we're trying to get you results. It's all about results. And that's you like my program is all about results. I want to see you at the next level in your business, period. But I also understand that there's going to come a time where there's going to be people that are going to be walking around here with enhanced possibilities. If you're watching live, come in live. If you're watching the replay, come in replay. That there is going to be a people that's going to walk around here in another state. They're going to be next level beings. So it's almost like the, the next level human, right? I was just saying to those of you who heard me that it's almost like we're seeing, and I hate to say this, but it's the truth. I really believe it's almost like we're seeing Genesis unfold at this next level. It's really interesting. This is being created as I speak. Like this is happening. This is a subject. This is a conversational piece that I think people need to listen to and hear and heed to because y'all really think that, oh, oh, is this going on? Is this that going on? Let me go back. I want to go back. I got to read this again. I got to read this again. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me okay? Especially Facebook. Can y'all hear me? Give me a one in the comments if you can hear me. Uh, was it TikTok? Give me a one if you can hear me on TikTok. Yes. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Let's talk about transhumanism. Once again, it is a philosophical and technological movement that aims to augment human capability, physically, intellectually, and emotionally through the use of advanced technology. We're talking everything from biohacking, y'all, biohacking neural implants to artificial intelligence and genetic engineering. What is the goal? What is the, the outcome? What is the result of this? To elevate human existence. So evolution is happening to extend our lifespans and potentially, potentially <laughs> just like, we get to see additional capabilities that we don't even know that we have. Now, before I even go further, I want to let y'all know, like, I am a fan of innovation. I am smart, okay? It took me a long time to even admit that because I, people just tell me I was smart and I, I'm okay. No, I'm smart, okay? I'm very smart. Now, here's the next part. <laughs> I've always been intrigued. I'm a nerd, period. I've, I've always like been a nerd, okay? I like to know stuff, especially coming from high-performing minds that don't think average. Um, people that operate on a level or a performance that I'm like, how in the world did you do that? Like, how in the world did you think of that? When did you have time to do this? Like, I don't think about, oh, I got to heal first. Oh, I got to think about this first. Oh, I need to go through this process and I need to figure out why my dad yelled at me at, at 10 years old. I don't have to go through that. Been there, done that, got the post. I'm ready to go on, right? I'm ready to see what is happening that I need to be aware of that affects not only the work that I do, but how I can adjust or make a decision about if I'm going to stay in the work that I'm doing per what's coming up the pipeline. But this is the piece too that we have to understand. When we talk about um, elevating the human existence, I know that's what I say, this is not a sexy topic at all. Like this is not sexy at all. Like to talk about this is very unconventional because most people want to talk about relationships. They want to talk about 
you know, uh, Will and Jada, they want to talk about these things, but I'm, I'm really kind of cutting the air a little bit by talking about something that I don't think that we are talking enough about. Like, this is for real. This is happening whether we like it or not. The elevation of human existence. That was the first thing that, that stuck out to me because I'm like, dang, humans have dropped the ball <laughs> during this, what is this industrial revolution? Like we're in the fourth industrial revolution right now, right? We're in the fourth, where it's all about AI, right? It's about virtual reality. It's about, um, what is it? Um, gosh, internet of things, 3D printing. Um, and I'm talking about food, clothes, all of it. All that is happening right now. These people that are thinking in these ways are thinking at a 10x level. And some of us are trying to figure out like how is how are these people able to move the needle on? And why do we like look, how why do some people struggle to post on Instagram or post on Facebook? But we got people that are actually creating new species or creating tools and biohacking and different technological advancing tools for humans to evolve and elevate. So you got one side of the humans that's struggling to find the right hashtags. And then you got some people over here that's creating a whole new human species. Where's the gap? <laughs> I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to understand why that is, you know, what, 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 what is, you see what I'm saying? So, okay, Jay, understandably so. Thank you for sharing. So what can I do as a coach to be prepared for this girl? Because this stuff is coming up the pipeline, okay? Whether we like it or not, whether we love God or not, somebody is playing God. That's all I'm saying. I don't know who it is. I'm very interested to know who's playing God at this point. Because humans, I am like, this is, somebody said this on a podcast the other day and I almost like, I was just shaking my head like, wow. This person said on this podcast and I can't remember who it was, but he said something very key. He said, to be a human now in 2023 is probably one of the most fascinating yet scariest times ever. He said, because you're living in two methods of movement. Number one, you're seeing the earth, the planet in labor. The planet is in labor. Why is the planet in labor? Because you got climate stuff going on. You've got truths being spoken you've got things that were hidden now becoming they're out there for the open for everybody to see you got the world wide web so the tree of knowledge is being ate all up on climbed up people are sitting on the branches and finding out all kinds of different things about what's going on with our government going on in hollywood going on everywhere right Truth, lies, we don't know, but people have the op opportunity to figure that out. They get to choose. Then on one end of the spectrum, you've got a completely different group that's creating, look, recognizing the gaps, recognizing the gaps of where humans are falling short, which is what? We're not birthing out more humans and we don't have a skilled humanity in terms of the workforce because why were we born? These questions are coming up now. So why were we born? Were we created or did we evolve? So questions are coming up. People are like, okay, what do we, like, were we really created? We, none of us was there at the original time, just saying, right? But this is the thing, none of us was there to see, this was, this is a revelation just came to me. None of us was there to see the evolution and the creation of humans. 
but we are now witnessing the creation and the evolution of a new species of humans. That is so fantastic. That's from, I'm gonna take this gum out. I forgot I had my gum, y'all, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> so, y'all see what I'm saying? That ain't that like crazy? That's crazy. TikTok, light me up with these lights. I love y'all. Because this is like crazy. We weren't there to see the Adam and the Eves. I don't care what y'all say. This is good. Ain't that interesting, Cheryl? Like, that's very interesting. It literally, like, we're seeing the newness. Okay, let's bring it to perspective for those who are Bible scholars. Like, I'm not a Bible. Like, I, I know the Bible. I came from church. I came from the Black church. It's almost like we're seeing revelations in Genesis happen at the same time. Now, I don't know if that has been a revelation. I'm going to say that one more time, just in case y'all want to screen record and put it on your own social media. <laughs> we are living in a time. I want you to listen to me. We are living in a time where we are seeing revelations in Genesis happening at the exact same time. JC, you my girl, listen, she just said some TikTok is on and popping. Do you hear me? TikTok is partying. She said, yes, I'm here for it. I'm trying to be a great scribe and messenger. Listen. Okay, here we go. And profitable. Uh-uh, no, I get it. Yes, but I'm going to tell you why that just hit me. Because why is my cord acting up? Wait a minute, hold on, y'all. My, my chair just rolled. See, I got excited and rolled over my little cord. Y'all, I'm human, okay? I mean, like, what is that girl doing on that live? She doing the most. I'm sorry, y'all. I got excited. JC, you got me excited. The beginning, y'all, TikTok gonna have me running. The beginning and the end at the same time. I can't believe Facebook. Are y'all sleep on Facebook? Like, wake up. Y'all, the beginning and the end. So we're seeing revelations in Genesis and we get a chance to document what is happening as we see it in real time. This is the reason why I read. This is the reason why I'm looking. I'm looking at documentaries. It's really exciting. We are here in the shift. Now, I don't know who all going. It's scary, right? It's scary. It's scary, but it's fascinating at the same time. I'm very intrigued by this because who would have known that we're entering a moment where most of us get to see in real time where things are shifting and being formed all at the same time simultaneously but see this is okay jc okay okay but see we got folks are now now this is going to be controversial what i'm going to say i don't want y'all to log off i want y'all to have an open mind and it's okay if this triggers you and you be like girl bye because i'm not trying to listen to you and it's okay if you get like that jc you just said some very key there she said, and God needs his folks to work. So that leaves the question, if, if the theory is that we're living, and I said theory, I didn't say truth, it's opinions. If we are looking at revelations and Genesis at the same time, and we're saying God needs his folks to work, who is the God that is creating this? Now, I know y'all gonna say, well, God is allowing humans, but we're creators of this realm, right? Let them have dominion in the earth. So are we creating? Is there, cre like, is there like, okay, so we're the God it's like we're we have dominion in the earth 
in our likeness, in our image. They're there, we're wherever, right? So down here on the earth, we are creating whatever. I know this mess with y'all, it's okay. But this is the thing, I, and she said, okay, so Ms. Amisha said we are co-creators. Are we? I told y'all I mess with y'all. I want y'all to think about, like, don't say it from a space of I heard somebody say, but to be honest, okay, so we are creating, okay, I ain't going to even mess with it because I really could, I, I was going to ask, was it, okay, JC, I see what you're saying, the God within me who I hear said, do what you were born to do. Okay, I, I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that because I do believe, now this is my personal belief, now this come, I came from the church, like my dad's a pastor and all that. And so I think very, you know, everybody ain't gonna dig. Everybody gonna dig. I, I wanted to go to theology school, theologian. I wanted to be a theologian. I wanted to do all of that. But I'm gonna tell y'all this. I really believe that we're moving into a time where we are it's all of this is being revealed to us and most of us will have to make a decision based on are we making decisions or are we going to continue to believe based on what we grew up with or what we know to be true per the information that was received so that's why i say i know that this messes with some some people's theology and some people's mindset but I'm saying this from a standpoint of look at where we are. And I told y'all, the age of Pisces is something that a lot of people are holding on to. People want to keep the age of Pisces, which is what? Lordship, somebody over you, the hierarchy, somebody you report to, somebody you be get approved, all of that. I want y'all to look at what the church, that's what I'm saying. So when we talk about, and this is a heavy subject because no, everybody like is, oh, you messing with me there. And I, I get it. It's okay. Everybody ain't there yet. Everybody ain't there. Or even trying to get over there. And that's fine. I'm just, thank you, JC. I want to just provide substance that if we are going to embrace what is coming, we have to understand too that the evolution of the human is going through a process right now. Open your eyes and see what is happening. So if I am to coach people, the coaching aspect is going to have to look different. I won't be able to coach like I was at first where I was coaching people from their emotions. Most of us are coaching people through their emotions to manage their emotions stabilize them so they can move on to the next point in their business or in their health or in their relationships right or wherever how we're coaching our people coaching is a necessity for people to go through something in order to get to the other side you have to go through in order to go out so the thing is our frameworks our processes our journeys through but if i am coaching someone that is that is a considered a transhuman in so many ways like this person now has enhanced cognitive capability facebook you woke i see the number that went down so probably trigger people with the whole god thing that's all right but the thing is the thing is how can we coach people from the standpoint of they have enhanced cognitive abilities, right? Cognitive abilities, which means that they're able to think faster. They're able to um, have stronger memory banks. They are, um, they're able to solve problems much quicker emotional regulation they're probably able to manage their emotions a whole lot better if they even have them
right? So now we're in a situation where we have to start, how do we see coaching now for people with souls, which are most of us, all of us, right? So anybody that's walking on earth for the most part has a soul. The soul is the emotion, the will, the intellect, and the mind. That's the person personality. Who we are is the soul. So this body that I have is a shell, right? It's coming, it's, it's a shell. This body is being operated by my soul and fueled by my spirit, by the spirit, right? The spirit is source God, the, the breath, right? With that being said, with that being said, we coach people from a state of they want to, they feel secure, they feel very safe, they feel like their needs are being met, and they can see a transformation happen. They can see on the other side of the thing. Right? They can see on the other side that there, there is me on the other side of this goal. So somebody said, let me see. Um, Cause I can't see. Um, the coaching would be coming from a different vantage point then. Yeah, absolutely. Somebody had a question. I may have missed it. Um, do you think all of these things can be learned as a skill? Yes. Some think people are just born with it. So yes. I do think a skill can be picked up by anybody. A skill can be picked up by anybody. But this is the, this is the thing, though. So you got to have the time to learn skills. A lot of people are not ready and they don't have the time to learn skills, especially nowadays. Skill development and skill mastery is very, very difficult for people that are leading with their emotions. Which brings me to the next point. My daughter and I were talking um, this morning. I was taking her to school. And we were having a conversation about emotions and thinking. So one of the things I told her, she goes to one of the, like, the best schools here in, like, in the city of where I live at. And one of the things that she notices like from her school, private school, private school, now this is all theory and opinion. I told her that you will see more urban inner city schools that keep you in a very emotional space, right? Step outside your body and listen to what I'm saying or step in the body, I guess you could say. What I'm saying is that if you look at, because I came from inner city school myself, I mean, hood 100%, okay? Period. However, most of those schools were kept emotional from so from heart chakra, if you will, heart energy centers down to the root, the root, sacral, solar plexus, heart, that all is down was all about feeling how to what Jay, can you make it plain for me? If you're in a classroom as a team and the teacher is always saying you need to get out, you need to leave. Y'all need to be quiet. Y'all need to sell yourself. Why y'all talking so much? Sit down, get out, go to the principal's office. Everything was about emotion. So guess what? The children in that room, if you had an unruly class, you could never really understand concepts because guess what? You were always being stopped from thinking and process thinking. And then you add phones on top of that these children are not getting the process thinking that they need in order to thrive in an AI fourth industrial revolution world. That's a word right there. That's a word right there. So everybody's emotional. Whether you go to private schools or to very affluent schools, it's quiet in there for the most part. I'm not saying that there are exceptions where there are times where they get unruly or whatever, but for the most part, they're being trained from heart up. So heart is the bridge between the emotion, right? The emotion and the thinking, the authority.
from the authority to the throat is speaking authority. Third eye is being able to see, see spiritually on the other side of things, see and be intuitively led. Crown is all about, I know, I know who I am, the audacity to be. But if I'm operating from my root, I'm thinking about survival. I'm thinking about home. I don't want to go home because my mom and my dad, they, they not together. My dad is this, my mom is gone and all this other stuff. And I'm not getting, but you know, my mom ain't got no job and we barely on food stamps, all this other stuff. And then they come to school mad, angry, ready to fight, ready to throw down, ready to throw bold. You know why? Because those children are not being prepared for augmented reality. They're not being prepared for enhanced cognitive abilities. They're not being enha uh, enhanced for 3D, for uh, printing. They're not being prepared for this life. So where do they leave our children that's in that spot? Come on, somebody. They have to go through another level of being under some type of control. Because the skilled, the skilled, would have to learn how to adapt and learn because thinking is going to have to be quick. Y'all, this is good right here. So the thinking would have to be quicker because you're dealing with AI. Don't you know when you put prompts in ChatGPT, Gemini, and some of these other AI prompt tools, that they spit out answers in less than a second. We are like right now, most of us are operating around 10% of our brain power. So if we ain't even equipping ourselves enough from a skill standpoint to even learn how to think quicker, because guess what? A lot of us are getting older. Our cognitive abilities are growing shorter. Our attention is getting shorter. Our attention is less than a squirrel. That is very alarming because we can't retain information like we used to. We have content being thrown at us in every wind of doctrine, okay? We got information coming to us from every direction. And then coaching, right? Coaching, some of us can't even hold space for clients and we can't even grow our businesses because we don't know how to sit still and give ourselves a structure to be able to grow our businesses. This is one of the things I be telling my clients. You're going to have to get some type of order because your soul is, is at a standstill. It's supposed to be here to create and expand and instead it's being halted every sense of the word because you're repeating the same cycle that you did when you was probably in school. Misha said, do you think we're coming into the age of Aquarius? Or no, we're not coming, uh, going into Pisces. We're leaving. So it's like an overlap. So we have Pisces and Aquarius at the same time. From my understanding, I'm not an astrologer, but I do read up on all that stuff because I'm interested. And I'm seeing the correlation of the skies and I'm seeing the correlation from the Bible as well, right? So Pisces is all about lordship where it was all about God, man, woman, children, right? Order, that's Pisces. That's Pisces. Aquarius is all about the age of air. It's an air sign. Air sign dealing with technology. So case in point example, I am using my Wi-Fi, okay, to be online, my computer to hook up to the internet where people can see me in any part of the world. TikTok, I don't know where y'all are tuning in from, but you can see me from other parts of the world. The signal is invisible. Wi-Fi is invisible. Air. It's all air. The man is pouring out the pitcher of water. The water is the feminine. Physiologically, right? Human wise, we're seeing women take our power back. We're seeing women elevate our own consciousness. We're seeing women expand just from being a man's user, whatever tool. However, 
even though I'm a, I'm a supporter of marriage, which I am 110%, I am, but I am supportive of marriage from a standpoint of, we got to look towards the future, the innovation of it all. Just like everything has to evolve, marriage has to evolve. The way we mate has to evolve. The way we communicate has to evolve. Friendships have to evolve. The way that we give birth to babies. Don't y'all know, and to, this is the part right here people don't even get. There's gonna come a point, they're already creating ways for women to not have babies. They're, they're in these little bubble things. Babies are being born that way. Your DNA is being altered. So women don't even have to carry babies anymore or get pregnant for humans to keep going. They're already breathing them. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. This is happening. I ain't even making this up. Look it up. Ecopods. Thank you. Ecopods. E-C-O-Pods. Thank you, Erie. They're, y'all, ha it's happening. We're seeing it happen. We're in the age. And y'all don't, I have never seen people that just fight. We're fighting for Pisces. We're fighting for the past. We're fighting for the past. I remember, you know, we, I wish men would just, no, they're not. Everybody's going through evolution. Everybody. Everybody's going through it. Like literally, like this is what's happening. Like I'm, I'm actually cool with it. When I'm saying I'm cool with it, I'm just leaning in because if I fight it, I can feel it in my body and I don't have time for that. <laughs> I don't have time. I, I really don't have time for it. Sasha said, oh, she said, pregnancy is sacred. They are turning to a science fair project. I'm going to tell you why that is a disturbance. Because when babies come out, there is an emotional connection. These babies are not going to have emotional connection. They're not going to feel connected to the mother. You know, when a baby comes out, they, the smell, the, um, the, the, the protection, the, the skin, the warmth of the mom's body, even the father, the father's there. That, that warmth, that protection, because everything, and this, this is why I said like the Aquarius age is not going to be the prettiest because we were ingrained in Pisces where everything was about connection. It was about emotion. It was about feeling. Oh, she said, if some say they will be soulless. I can see that. I can see that. Aquarius is detachment. Yes, Sasha, absolutely. They'll be completely detached. So even the way that we connect with people is going to be different. We're going to have to die off for this new human to thrive here at the fullest. I'm just telling you. This is the gag though. To buy, like capitalism, And y'all can follow me because I talk about this stuff all the time. Follow me on social, on Twitter. I mean, Twitter, Jesus. What is this called? TikTok? Facebook? So what I'm saying is Aquarius is all about shifting the information into information. It's not always about revelation. It's really awakening and information. So we're in the information age. We're in the automation stage. Robots are going to be normalized in our homes. <clears throat> when we go to restaurants, when we go to the store, it's going to be normalized. They're turning like, and it's gradually happening because if they did it all at one time, we will freak out. But they've been doing this gradually for the last 10 years or so, like cashierless registers. When you go into the store at some point, maybe even before you leave here, 
you're going to see every store you go to is not going to have a cashier. You probably have one or two people that's going to be there for service because guess what? We still have souls. So you still have emotion. People still need to feel like they're being served. So Nika said robots already, right. So all this stuff is happening. It just haven't happened wide spread yet on a mainstream level. It's being tested in certain areas. So JC said, all the old men folks in my inbox, well, that's going to continue to be until eventually they all leave or we all leave because humans now, the, these, like the ones that left over from Pisces, we, we crave connection. We crave emotion and, and, you know, that physical connection with someone else, the emotional connection with somebody. We crave that. We have been learned how to be independent emotionally. We have to have somebody, right? We need people to need us in so many ways. That's how we feel like we matter. So coaches, especially ones that y'all trying to build your businesses, you're going to have to figure out how am I going to still be of service and serve a person that could potentially already outthink me? This person already can outthink me. This person can already outsolve problems. How can I coach somebody like that? See, these are skills that need to be addressed. And this is where y'all need to start doing research on your downtime when you get some wiggle room in your schedule. How can I start the process of learning how to coach a human that identifies as a transhuman? The internet of bodies, boom, that part. Because our, our human, our bodies are full of systems and electricity. I'm not making this up. I'm not making it up. Virtual reality, being able to have the virtual reality, be able to go into spaces and actually sit with your client in Sweden or sit with your client in Africa. Well, sit with your client in Mexico. Like these are going to be like, you can sit down and actually have a conversation with your client on the, on the East Coast or the West Coast, depending on where you at, and be able to have a conversation about their goals and their dreams and their aspirations. These things are happening. And I think that if we continue to drag our feet, and keep focusing on the wrong stuff, we're going to find ourselves, we're going to be bypassed. Like, we're just going to be passed over. Skills. So if this person is going to be able to outthink me, this person is going to be able to have a supercharged way of thinking, where does that leave me if I don't know how to think that fast? especially when that population is going to be growing and the human, as we know, the homo sapien is going to be decreasing because guess what? This is going to be the thing right here. Who is going to be living longer? Who's going to be living longer? Who's going to choose to do that? Because there's going to be some people that's going to choose to live longer. There's going to be some people that say, no, nah, I ain't trying to be here no more than I have to because I'm ready to go. So those, majority of those people are going to be gone because they're going to be too emotional anyway to even stay here. I remember this man said that if people want to be here, they got to learn how to be here. It was on the 11th house. If y'all got Gaia TV, I would strongly encourage you to watch that. They have a um, Aquarian, ep like Aquarian episodes about the age of Aquarius. I would strongly recommend that you, and that's, it's not to say like, oh, I'm believing this. Oh, like, I want y'all to be open-minded and think about all spokes of the wheel because people are coming. Like, you need to know, you need to be exposed and understand conversation. You don't want to cut people off just because they believe something and you don't. You need to understand what they're saying and then you need to make a choice. Say, do I want to deal with that or not? And not feel like you have to go off on them, but just say, you know what? I don't know if I really want to 
move in that direction, but I respect your opinion. I think that's another thing too. Y'all got to stop running away from conversations that may not be your part. It may not be on the level where you at, but I do encourage you to start listening and coming into reason. If this, like, understand it. Ain't nobody trying to come to you and be mean about it. Just be open to it. And if it's not your cup of tea, it's okay to reject it. Or it's okay to say, let me do some research on that and get back to you. I don't know if that resonates with me right now. So this is the thing though, if I, okay, so this is the elevation of the human. This is what transhuman is. It's not necessarily creating a new human per se. It is literally the evolution of the current human. Here we go. What am I saying? Man, it's close your door. Sorry, y'all, my daughter. <laughs> so here, here's the thing. I have, like, it's me, it's me. If they say, hey, we have something that you can take or put in you, as we already know, some of y'all can say the mark of the beast, you know, the 666 thing. I get it. I understand. These are some things that it is what it is. If you don't take it, that's fine. If you don't, I, I'm not saying I am. I'm just listening. I'm just listening. Because I don't even want to go there. Because y'all really been dropped off the call. <laughs> so anyway. If they say something about, hey, y'all can live instead of living to 77 or 75, you can live to 205. So this is the thing you're going to look, um, you're going to live longer. You're going to be more, um, you're going to be healthier. So she said, hmm, the jab. I, I don't think it's going to be the jab. I don't think it's going to be the jab at all. I just don't think, I don't think that that's going to be, I think the jab is for something else. I need to be careful because, you know, these things don't take me down. That's my opinion. The jab is for something else, I think. That's a whole nother lie. <laughs> that's a whole nother lie. Is it going to be one with the emotional intelligence I could be hearing wrong? Tanika said, let me, let me read that again. Yep, it's in the food. I hear that the evolution of the human isn't going to be one with emotional intelligence because their emotions are going to be so. This is where I found right here. That transhumanism, that transhumanism comes with emotional regulation. So this person is going to be already regulated. So instead of them feeling like a tiger is chasing them all the time because that's how everybody's acting right now if you look at the whole scope of humans everybody's walking around as if a tiger is following them everybody is tense everybody is tired everybody is fight or flight right now and it's very not everybody but most people right now they are i'm nervous and what if and what if they come and what if this world war through what if this did and did it it's always what if like you're looking up as how am I going to survive when you're literally surviving every single day? Like we keep getting up and going to bed all right. That's why we like, you're not in danger. There's no bear chasing you. Like you're okay. And you go to bed in safety for the most part. I'm not saying, I know there are exceptions, but I'm talking about for the majority of us, keep stay focused. So for me to coach somebody and to learn these pieces, I have to start thinking in terms of what is going to keep me in business for the long haul and to sustain my company. Because this is where, really where the questions come in because this person is emotionally regulated. Okay. They're going to look at me and laugh because it's like, okay, girl, like I already know how to outthink you. These are questions. I mean, I'm just literally, it's a question. What else can you like coach people on, right? Because I, thank you, JC, JC. I see, I see where you're going. I'm the human. I'm human now, right? But if I want to become a trans human, I'm going to go to whatever facility and have them to put a neural, whatever that thing is, 
to help me think 10 times faster. Because I'm going to tell you this, people with jab, they definitely ain't thinking faster. A lot of them ain't. Some of them are. I'm not saying everybody under that thing because I know some people that took it and they ain't, they ain't thinking like they was at first. And that's just me. Uh, like I said, I don't want to offend nobody on here. Well, what do we do in business as a coach and motivational speaker? See, that's what I'm saying. That These are questions. I'm just raising the awareness in our industry that we need to start thinking about these pieces. And I don't see a lot of coaches talking about it. I'm just saying. Future thinking, that's what I'm saying. It's all about like what is, come like I need to start putting some type of slot in my calendar at some point where I can revisit this at a later date and, and look at this because I'm going to tell y'all this in the next year or two I can see this coming up as a conversation and I'm, I want y'all to remember this conversation that we're having tonight because it's going to become mainstream in the coaching industry I'm telling you I'm telling you we're not talking about this yet we're going to have to start having some conversations with ourselves and say okay as of now we are right in, in so many ways. However, it's going to come a point if I want to sustain in my industry, how am I going to be able to coach somebody who went and decided to go get elevated? Because let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. For those of y'all that's just tuning in, I'm going back to the definition. What is transhumanism? It's the philosophical and technological movement that aims to augment human capabilities, physically, intellectually, and emotionally. So in all ways, mind, body, and spirit, and so in quote unquote, through the use of advanced technologies, where biohacking, neural implants, to artificial intelligence and genetic engineering, which we already know is happening right now. That is happening. Is happening. What is the goal of transhumanism? To elevate human existence. In other words, human evolution is happening again. We were called homo, homo sapiens. Homo sapiens. Now we're moving into transhumanism. We're, like I said at the beginning, we're seeing genesis, uh, revelations in Genesis happen at the same time. Our age is closing up as a homo sapien. This is happening. So guess what? The human ain't going to stop. It's going to evolve. Do y'all see what I'm saying? It ain't like the human is going to stop and they're just going to have all robots. That's not what I'm saying. I don't know if y'all caught that. It's literally us evolved. So which means what happened? Homo sapiens, we failed in this era. We didn't do well, according to the powers that be. We didn't meet the mark. Our emotions became our default in the way that we let, we let ourselves. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Y'all quiet. <laughs> so it's not like the, all the humans are dying off. The, the babies that are coming in are either going to be enhanced or the ones that are currently here and or, I should say and or, and or the humans that are alive, like the adults right now, like the millennials and disease, and possibly a little bit of the excess depend you know generation x are going to have the opportunity to walk in another level of whatever that is on a transhuman level because these babies are coming in different y'all i don't know if y'all get that these babies are coming in i'm talking about you know you had babies that were gifted and give you know y'all my the, uh, my nephew is five. At two years old, this boy was reading billboards with long three, four syllable words. We had, my mama had to stop on the side of the road and say, what did you just read? 
two years old. And my sister wasn't reading with him. She was young. You know, she wasn't like, had him in no, he kept, he wasn't even in daycare. And my sister, my baby sister, she is not like, like I said, she not sitting down and, you know, she was doing a little color and stuff. But I'm talking about advanced level, gifted and talented, like a whole nother level. These babies coming in different. So they're coming in very enlightened. They're coming in talking about other beings and other galactic spatial planets. All these things are happening. Like babies are being born with enlightened and being able to talk about other worlds. My daughter is one and can count up to 20. Everyone is shocked when I tell them. This. And it, look, and they come in already knowing how to. Like it ain't even like you teaching them a whole bunch of stuff. They come in and they just know. And it's like, how do you just know this? Coming in. Let's talk about it. I love that. They're very intelligent beings. And they're super, and I think this is one of the reasons why they're the most oppressed population in this world right now like it literally is you know it's really noticeable it's noticeable so let's talk about it somebody said uh do, 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 do. we need to structure hold on let me go back i want to make sure i'm we need to structure our business now to be prepared for the future while still servicing i think it's more so about not just structuring, but getting skilled to do so. I think we need to skill up first and learn more about what this looks like from a standpoint of like, what does it look like from a business CEO standpoint? I need to know what that looks like. And then we can proceed with ideology and creativity and structuring business from there. Now that's my that's my process of doing things. I want to know what's happening and then start having ideas of how now, what can I offer? Because to offer, you got to know what it is, what problem you're solving for a person that can think faster than you at the current moment. Amen, somebody. Okay. She said, because we still need to take in consideration of social classes. That's another thing too. Let's go there. Let's talk about it real quick. Social classes transhumanism social classes now i haven't done my research in the area and that's something I, I really really want to look into because we already know right we already know that social classes the wealthy the po the poor the poverty the wealth upper class you know upper echelon affluent super wealthy high ultra wealthy those these classes we already know middle class is just about done. Like, I mean, just y'all feel here. That's my dog in the background. My daughter and her are going back and forth. They argue like actual people. It's really like my daughter is a human, obviously, but the dog is the dog. And they're arguing up there. Anyway, my whole point is this. If we are looking at it from a social class standpoint, the transhuman is operating from a state and I'm being real like kind of looking at it from a standpoint of emotion. So emotion, these people are emotionally regulated. So middle class operates from, I got to be stable. I got to be stable and I got to look stable. Y'all hear what I said. You got to be stable. You got to look stable because middle class is all about credits. Everything is about credit. It's all about credit. It's all about the image of I'm building my credit. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm, you know, I got my two cars. I got my house with two car garage and I have a dog and I have two kids and me and my, it's, that's the middle class, but we already know that that's about to be out because why the housing market is right now in a, in a up and down right now. However, investments and all of that is on the rise. Somebody said here, 
Uh, the poor will still be lost in the sauce. Well, the poor always lost in the sauce. They're going to always be lost. They're lost now in the sauce. So that ain't going to change. But the middle class, it, they're going to have to decide which way they're going to go because it ain't going to be no room right here in the middle because you're going to be so anxious trying to keep what you have. This is why I, I remember my uh, mentor said this years ago. It is almost impossible for people to go to the wealth class from the middle because you're, you can't lose anything. You feel like you didn't work so hard for your degrees, your, your house, your trucks, your cars, all these things that like you feel like you worked so hard. And I don't want to, what is it called? Uh, to think they are the working class. Middle class is the working class. That's exactly what they are. And this poverty too. Middle class is the, what did she say? Shoot, I'm going to give it all. It's, it's literally like they're trying to keep this lifestyle and they can't move because they're trying to hold on to a life that's stressing them out. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, they're holding on to it. So it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's one of those things where they're going to have to decide. And you're going to see a lot of middle class, they're going to, uh, release because they can't keep it up anymore and they're going to either have to go down a class or they're going to have to look stupid for a little bit I said look stupid not be stupid look stupid because there's going to be people out there that's going to say why are you doing all that why are you leaving your $80,000 uh, I mean $80,000 a year job why are you leaving your $35,000 $40,000 dollars an hour job why are you doing that in order to chase this dream because I got to run and I got to, it was just said, we need to take calculated risks. We got to just take risks, period. This is going into the next dimension if we're going to be here. That's why I'm really a big celebrator and su a supporter of women who want to be sustained. Like they, self-sufficiency is a must for women right now. And I, I get it. I want you to like women dream of being married. Women dream of being with the, 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 the man in our, of their lives and their mate and the partner, the love of their life. I get that. And I want you to have that. I get it. However, with the clashing of the genders right now, it's a lot going on. It's a clash. We're at, there's an internal battle going on right here in the world where the feminine and the masculine are rubbing elbows, like they throwing bows right now. So if we are going to be here, we got to learn how to be here. And if we're not going to be here, we need to figure out like, are we just going to settle and just give it up and just wait on our life to just expire on that? Because there's some people right now that say that I'm give up. I, I can't do it no more. I'm just going to you know, count the days and I'm out of here. So this is why I'm saying, if you're going to choose a mate, in my humble opinion, it needs to be somebody who is thinking futuristic, who is thinking innovation, who is thinking creativity, who's, th who's thinking evolution. If you're going to be here, because I'm going to tell you all this, you're going to be lost in the sauce as well. If you don't choose wisely, I have to be with somebody who's thinking out of this world. I have to, I have to choose somebody like that because like what we're going to talk about. I don't want to talk about nothing in the past. I don't want to go back to the past. I don't care. What are we doing now to keep ourselves in the livelihood of what's happening now going into the future? It's very important. You got a percentage of children that are being brought up to be thinkers and to be problem solvers. And then you have one end of the spectrum of children being brought up to be emotional and ready to cry and ready to beat up everybody. <laughs> and then you're gonna have humans that know how to think like computers. Like not going, they're not going to be phenomenons. They're going to be thinking like computers and we're going to see them all the time every day. I even think that some people, like I'd be thinking in my mind, like how in the world, okay, 
I know this is everybody's least favorite person, but I study high performing people. My clients know this. And I'm all about self-mastery. I absolutely love that subject. And the reason I'm saying that is because I really want to know what the human potential is when you live it full out 100%, right? I didn't get that opportunity to be raised up in, a, in an environment that encouraged 100% self-mastery and high performance. I am a high performer in so many ways, but I literally want to know what it's like to operate at that full potential, right? So for me, I know, like I said, this is, every, this is not everybody's favorite person, but like people like Elon Musk, I know, please don't get emotional and say, well, I'm coming out because you know, y'all act like he did something to you personally. He didn't do anything to you personally. Y'all didn't get into it. <laughs> y'all did not get, go back and forth with each other on the phone. He did not come to your house and steal your potted plants, okay? That's why I said, like, some of us got to learn how to detach from people. Like, folk really be, like, mad at people like Elon and Jeff Bezos. Especially if you're an entrepreneur, you shouldn't be mad because you literally are building a business. They did the same thing. But I'm interest, interested in their brains. And, yes, we can go all day about privilege and stuff like that but we can also think about what's that man named robert f smith that's black man that's a, um a billionaire let me look at people like that i'm thinking about their brains like how is it and then they're men too but how is it can they reach this billion dollar status look at rihanna you know i look at people like that the performance you literally have to become a different person how their minds work. I understand it. Yeah, well, they took this capital and they put it towards that and they did this and they did it towards that. As a species, if we are not asking questions, like for example, if you in a room with a billionaire and they give a speech and after the thing is over, most people just go right on out like, man, that was so inspiring. But nobody goes up to that person and asks them like, what did you do every day? I told y'all about the, uh, what's that baby name? The fastest runner. What's her name? Shikari. I hope I'm not getting her, butchering her name. I hope that's her, like I'm saying it right, y'all. I've been talking all day. I'm looking at this girl. Please, y'all correct me if I say her name wrong. But the girl is the, one of the fastest runners, fastest woman runner I know in the world. I know in the country. And the only thing, this is how I knew humans was failing. The only thing that people were worried about was her hair. Like her hair. Oh, it's natural hair. Her natural hair. I'm like, she's wearing her natural hair. And I'm like, ain't nobody asking this girl what she do every day. How many days does she practice? What do you eat for performance? How much water do you drink a day? Like we're not asking the right questions, which also lets me know that we are escaping. People, a lot of humans right now don't want to perform. They don't want to think. A lot of women don't want to think, period. We're asking men to think for us. Now, I do understand. I do understand that there is a level of trust that you can, you know, with a man that's a, but a lot of us really don't be wanting to think. And I don't understand why you don't want to think, but that's me. Like I always, I don't ever want to lose my identity. I've been married twice, by the way. And I know what it's like to lose your identity under a man and he ain't right. Been there, done there, got the postcard. So I'm just telling you. But I'm going to close up with this, though. I'm going to close up with this. As we begin to think about all of this stuff that's happening in the world, the, the whole point is to keep you emotional, 
But at the same time, I don't even know if it's to keep you emotional. It's to keep you in a state where you're not solving your own problems. You're trying to solve another problem that's bigger than you. And that's not where you need to direct your energy. You're trying to like, we're in the government's face saying, and look, and we're really not doing anything. We're talking about it. A lot of people are just talking about what the government should do. We're talking about the whole Israeli thing. We're talking about the Palestinian thing. We're talking about all of these things and having discussions with each other online when no one has solved any problems. What is the problem that you're solving? by having conversations about it and it's not going to the right people. This is why I said humans have failed. Because who gets online and talks about the atrocities of is, you know, the countries over there has been fighting for centuries over a piece of land, but then when we talk about why you can't get up in the morning and stay on a schedule, now we got issues where I got this going on, you're over there in a whole different conversation and you're not going to do anything about it because if you were really passionate about what's going on over there, you would write your politician. You were right, your senator. You were right to the person that's the elected official in your state, city, or whatever, governor, et cetera, to the president. But we don't have that right now because people are stuck on emotion. We're not thinking. The people that are doing this up here, they're investing in politicians. They're investing in people that they want to see elected. They're actually making calls to their elected governor and elected political representatives. These people that operate from this on up are people that are looking at authority. I want to talk to the person in charge. I want to talk to the ones who I voted in and the ones who have cast in votes and voting for this stuff to be done. I need to have a conversation with these people. That's why I understand why we get online and be doing all this thick talking and nobody is solving any problems. This is the craziest thing to me. The decision makers, thank you, Tanika. It's the, it's the fact of the matter is that we're not using our brains for things that we need to be using our brains for. Like if you're that passionate, show me by co contacting somebody. Oh, I just want to keep y'all, what they say, uh, people be saying, oh, I just, y'all need to be, get ready. Get ready for what? We know one thing is happening. Eco pods are, are happening. Things are happening, whether we like it or not, without your consent, without your knowledge, all because the homo sapien has failed. We failed, the, whatever this experiment is that we in, we didn't pass the QA check. We didn't pass it. Mm -mm, we didn't pass it. We didn't pass the test. We did not pass the test. So what happens is that when we don't pass the test, they got to get proactive and start creating something else because we ain't where we need to be. Ain't that something? It's really something. It is really, 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 really something. So the Matriarch CEO coaching program is open. <laughs> we are open for enrollment. And I coach from this space. I got some of my clients on here listening on Facebook and some of them on uh, TikTok Live. Um, but we're going on. This is very interesting. If you need coaching, come on through. Send me a DM, look in my link in my profile and check out what we have going on, but the Matrix CEO coaching program is open. Four months, I will send you information. I have a case study, the Alpha Client case study. We took process by process, end to end on how we got our clients to five figure months consistently. It's on. Oof, uh, Tanika said, funny thing is we all take the fall, not a specific race, the human race. 
And on that note, <laughs> on that note, that'll do. That'll do it. Thank you, Tanika, for closing us out, honey. Um, TikTok, I hope y'all have a great night. Facebook, I hope you have a great night. Of course, I'm going to take the replays down. You can see it on YouTube if you need to watch the replay. I'll talk to y'all soon. Take care. Good night. <laughs>